My dear friends, when people say they want to improve their English communication, they focus on vocabulary, they focus on grammar, they focus on pronunciation too. But a lot of people do not know vocabulary is of various types. There are adjectives, there are collocations, there are phrasal verbs. If you are somebody who wants to improve their vocabulary and make it better, today's lesson is for you. Because in today's lesson, I bring to you a category of vocabulary which is called phrasal verbs, which are related to daily conversation. So in today's lesson, we will understand most important phrasal verbs for daily conversations. My name is Radhan. Radhan loves you a lot. And let's get started with today's session. The first phrasal verb for today is space out. Phrasal verb means two words that come together. The first word is a verb and the second word is a preposition. Preposition basically means a word which is telling us about the position of something. So face which is the verb and prepositions. I'm just going to write it here. Space out here means when someone's attention is not in the present moment. So that's when you say, dude, have you spaced out or something? When people are not concentrating. For example, hey, you're spacing out again. Please focus. Teachers often use this in classrooms and they say, your attention, your attention is not, there in, not in the lecture. Do not space out. When space out is happening in the moment, you use ing with it. And we call it spacing out. Look, Jeff's spaced out again. So possibly Jeff was writing something, suddenly started looking out of the window. So you're saying, look at him again. He's not focusing on his writing. He started looking out of the window. So when you're talking about past, you say spaced out. The next phrasal verb for today is monkey around with. One of my favorite phrasal verbs today. You must be like, you must be like Rudan, you said, phrasal verbs are only with two words. Sometimes there are three words as well, such as monkey around with. For example, it means to act carelessly or not have serious attitude towards something. That is called monkeying around with. Sometimes people monkey around with machines when they do not know how it works. Sometimes people just monkey around. They act carelessly. For example, are you really a certified technician? Are you really an engineer to handle this machine? I don't want anyone monkeying around with my computer. I don't want anyone to be just carelessly play with my machine. Next example is maybe monkey around with it for a bit and it may start working again. A lot of people do this. A lot of uh, fathers do it at home, especially when a machine is not working. They start monkeying around with it. And what happens? By chance, it starts to work again. So that is what is being referred in this sentence. What do you monkey around with or have monkeyed around with recently? Do let us know in the comments section below. Acted carelessly or not with serious attitude in a particular situation. Moving on to the next one in the list and that is hit on. It means to suddenly have a solution to a problem. It's like, it's like this attitude. I'm immediately having a solution to a problem is called hit on. They hit on the idea of going on a road trip this weekend probably they were thinking about it for a long, long time, what to do during the weekend. Suddenly an idea came. They were hit on with an idea. When we have a problem, we usually brainstorm until we hit on a solution. Happens with a lot of teams as well. They think about, the brainstorm means, they think about various different ideas and then finally reach a particular solution, reach a particular idea, final idea, and that is they hit on an idea. Next phrasal verb is beef up and it means to add weight to something. It can be your own body as well or strength or power. For example, the security in the city is beefed up prior to the Prime Minister's visit. So Prime Minister of the country is visiting your city and the security has been made 
powerful has strengthened. Why? Because the Prime Minister is coming. So it has become more powerful. It, it has beefed up. The next one on the list today is, as an example, regular gymming would help you beef up your muscles. People go to the gym and what happens? They make a lot of muscles and that is called beefing up. To gain more muscles is beefing up. Next one is crack down. Crack down means to take more actions than usual against wrongdoings. For example, if you do something wrong, sometimes people do things to avoid those wrongdoings, those wrong actions. To take further more actions for that is crack down. For example, the government has started a drive, drive to crack down on tax defaulters. That means the government has started uh, a program where they they're going to find out who are the defaulters in the tax payment services, etc. Next example is, the teachers started to crack down on latecomers by making them write 100 sentences for each minute they are late. Very nice strategy by the smart teacher maybe, that uh, in order to avoid this problem, because a lot of students were coming late, the teacher started doing this. The teacher started with this strategy. Next phrasal verb for daily conversation is wipe out. It means, it means to destroy something completely. The virus in my computer wiped out the entire hard drive. Hard drive is basically the place where you store everything. So the virus that had come on in had completely destroyed the entire content in my computer. The tsunami wiped the whole village out. A sad situation. A tsunami hit and it wiped out, destroyed the entire village. The next one is brush off. And it means to intentionally ignore someone. You meet somebody at a party and you're not intentionally looking at the person. So what are you doing? You're brushing off the person. You need to stop being so sensitive and learn how to brush off rude comments. It's important. A lot of times on social networking apps, people write rude comments for each other, isn't it? And in that scenario, it's important that people learn how to ignore them. People learn how to brush them off. I saw Nithya yesterday. Nithya is the name of the person here at the mall. But she brushed me off like she didn't see me. That's, su that's such a rude thing to do. Probably Nithya didn't want to meet th this person who's saying the sentence. So it is, Nithya was the one who ignored, brushed her off. The next one is brush up. The last one was brush off. The next one is brush up. And it means to improve your knowledge and skills. Especially during lockdown, people started brushing up their skills, getting better at them. That's when we say brush up. For example, he knows how to speak Spanish, but he needs to brush up. He needs to get better at it. I just need to brush up my driving skills. I haven't driven in a long time. That means I need to drive a little more to polish that skill better. The next phrasal verb is drop in, which means to make a casual or informal visit to a person or place. For example, I might drop in to check on you this weekend. Possibly one of my good friends, Mohit is talking to me and he's telling me that uh, I'm free during this weekend. I might come to your office for a drop-in visit. That means casual visit. It's my workplace. You can't just drop in to see me here. A lot of times when you say this to your family members or you know uh, somebody that you're dating, that please don't come to my office like that. It's not comfortable. Don't drop in. The next one is turn up in the list of phrasal verbs for today. And it means to appear or arrive. For example, Bruce turned up at the party drunk and high. Bruce was the name of the person and he came to the party, turned up, arrived at the party, drunk. This job turned up just when I needed it. That means this job came to me. I got this job just exactly at the time when I needed it. So it is not only used for the person, but it is also used for the opportunity as well. Opportunity arriving at your doorstep. This was about all the phrases that you can make use of in your daily life when it comes to improving your vocabulary through not collocations, not adjectives, but phrasal verbs. Make use of them to convey about these daily life situations in a better way. Thank you very much for joining with me in this lesson and I will see you soon.